A single person made a superpower like America see stars in broad daylight. In 2013, he stole over a million top-secret documents from the United States and revealed them to the world. And ever since, for the past 11 years, he has been America's most wanted criminal. Despite causing so much damage to the American government, today, he is seen as a hero by many around the world. But why did he steal the top-secret documents from one of the world's most secretive agencies, and why did he leak them? And after all this, how has he managed to avoid capture by the U.S.? This was political. Teenager. Cyber attacks. Hijacked the computers of several U.S. intelligence and security. A collective called Crackers with Attitude. Welcome once again to Deep World Videos. The morning of June 6, 2013, brought a storm of trouble for the American government. The day started with a shocking revelation when a series of investigative news articles were published in The Guardian and The Washington Post. These reports contained highly classified details from the National Security Agency, NSA, revealing the depths of the agency's covert surveillance operations. These top-secret documents didn't just surprise Americans, but also sent shockwaves across the world as they revealed that the American government had been secretly spying on every mobile user globally. People from all corners of the globe learned that their private conversations and data were being monitored without their consent or knowledge. The documents unveiled the existence of PRISM, a covert surveillance program that allowed the U.S. government to secretly access personal data of any individual using major tech companies like Google, Apple, and Facebook as entry points. This program enabled the government to bypass typical privacy protections and snoop on private messages, emails, and other sensitive information. The leaked documents also exposed a broader and more alarming scope of the NSA's surveillance activities. Among these files was an 18-page memo written by President Obama in which he requested intelligence officials to provide a list of foreign targets for potential cyber attacks. This memo highlighted the strategic reach of the U.S. government's cyber warfare capabilities. But this was merely the tip of the iceberg. The leaked files revealed that the National Security Agency had successfully hacked into the computer networks of Hong Kong and China's military. This cyber espionage exposed the reach and sophistication of the NSA's operations, targeting not just individuals but entire nations. Even more shockingly, the NSA had tapped the personal phone of Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany at the time, raising concerns about trust between allied nations. The documents also shed light on the activities of the British Government Communications Headquarters, GCHQ, the UK's equivalent of the NSA. The GCHQ was running its own surveillance program, spying on its citizens in ways that were previously unknown. Perhaps the most disturbing part of the revelations was the collaboration between the NSA and GCHQ. The leaked conversations between these two powerful agencies disclosed discussions about how they could deceive the public, manipulate information, spread propaganda, and use social media platforms to control public opinion. This created a growing sense of unease, as it appeared that not only were these agencies invading privacy, but they were also actively seeking ways to influence and manipulate the thoughts and behaviors of entire populations. These revelations were not just a wake-up call for the citizens of the U.S. and the U.K., but for people all over the world, sparking global debates about the limits of governmental power, the ethics of mass surveillance, and the very nature of personal freedom in the digital age. At first, no one knew who had leaked the documents and whether they were genuine, because news agencies are not required to reveal their sources. But just three days later, a man came forward and took responsibility for leaking these top-secret documents. This man was 29-year-old Edward Snowden, a high school dropout who had started his career with the U.S. military, but after a year, was discharged and became a security guard at the University of Maryland in 2005. Edward Snowden may not have been good at academics, but his computer skills were so strong that the CIA hired him. After spending a few years with the CIA, he was hired by American tech giant Dell in 2009. Dell had a contract to upgrade the computer systems of the National Security Agency, and Snowden was also assigned to this project. 
Initially, his role was as a supervisor, but later he became a cyber strategist. At this point, Edward Snowden was a gem for the CIA and NSA. So, what happened that made him be labeled a traitor by the same agencies? The incident that led to Snowden's transformation from a cyber strategist to a traitor occurred when he was working on upgrading the NSA's computer systems. Snowden discovered that the NSA had the power to access the personal data of any mobile user. He initially thought he was looking at the records of international criminals, but in reality these were not criminals. They were ordinary American citizens. Around the same time, a debate was taking place in the U.S. Congress on the issue of intelligence. American politician Ron Wyden asked the NSA director James Clapper in a public congressional session, broadcast on national television, if the NSA was collecting data on American citizens. Clapper responded by saying, no, we only focus on foreign intelligence. Watching his director lie on television, Snowden was shocked. He became so angry that three days later, he quit his job at Dell, where he was earning $200,000 a year. In 2013, he joined Booz Allen Hamilton, a company that worked for the U.S. military, CIA, and NSA. Even at Booz Allen, Snowden was again assigned to an NSA project. According to the National Security Agency, Snowden stole so many files from their systems that it's difficult to estimate the exact number, but it could be more than two million. But how did Snowden manage to copy these top-secret files without anyone noticing? The surprising thing is that he didn't use any sophisticated hacking tools. Instead, he did it all with a small USB drive. But how? Most offices, even regular ones, ban the use of USB drives due to the fear of data theft. Moreover, not every employee in a company has access to confidential data, and these were the computers of the National Security Agency, known for their top-level security. Snowden was assigned to a project in Hawaii, five miles away from the NSA's headquarters. Hawaii is six hours behind Maryland, meaning when Snowden was working in his Hawaii office, everyone at the NSA headquarters had left for the day. Furthermore, he had access to NSA servers through an outdated thin client system. Lastly, as a system administrator, Snowden had high security clearance, allowing him access to many systems. Snowden took advantage of this and copied over 2 million files without being noticed. After working in the Hawaii office for four weeks, Snowden decided to expose the NSA's actions to the world. He copied all the documents onto a USB drive, cleverly hid it from the security guard, called in sick, turned off his phone, and flew to Hong Kong. When he didn't return for several days and couldn't be reached, the NSA grew suspicious and began looking for him. In Hong Kong, Snowden met with a few trusted journalists, gave them the documents, and the next day, these documents became world headlines. Snowden's leaked documents sparked a worldwide debate on the NSA's secret powers, and charges were filed against him for stealing government property, unauthorized access to national security systems, and leaking top secret information. The American government demanded Hong Kong hand Snowden over, but Snowden had already planned his every move. Before they could act, he boarded a plane to Russia, where he was initially granted asylum, and later, in September 2022, Russian President Vladimir Putin granted him Russian citizenship. Since then, Edward Snowden has given several interviews where he explained how our phones spy on us. He mentioned a tool that allows security agencies to access our phone's microphone, enabling them to listen to the surrounding conversations without any interruption. While some view Snowden as a traitor, Others believe he is a hero who exposed the true face of the NSA to the world. What's your opinion? Let me know in the comments section. I hope you all liked and shared this video. Thank you for your lovely comments. See you in the next amazing video.